It has always seemed a matter of time, not if, but when. Tommy Tuberville's blockade on military promotions would have a real-world effect on U.S. national security. That moment is upon us. It's right now. After the commandant of the Marine Corps suffered a medical emergency on Sunday, serious enough to warrant a stay at the hospital, Senate Armed Services Chair Jack Reed told Politico this, quote, One of the reasons, I think, that contributed to his condition was he was doing two jobs at once. I read where he was working from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. As a result, if he had, as is normal, an assistant, he could switch off. As soon as today, at Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's direction, the Senate could vote to confirm the Marine Corps' second-ranking officer, along with President Joe Biden's picks to lead the Air Force and the Navy. Joining me at the table, the founder of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and the host of the Independent Americans podcast, our friend Paul Rykoff is back and out of the Capitol for us, my friend and colleague, NBC News correspondent Ali Vitali. Ali, first, on this, um, on this real tragic consequence of what I know is... is politics as usual behind you. Um, what is Schumer going to do? Is he going to hold them there until they have these individuals confirmed? Well, at least for these three that we saw him file cloture on yesterday, Nicole, yes, we expect to see that vote happen potentially today, but more likely sometime Thursday. But there is a larger conversation happening because these three nominees, yes, they they plug the dam, the leak in the dam, so to speak, in terms of the present crisis that's immediately in front of the Marine Corps right now. But it's nothing to say of the hundreds of other military promotions that are still being held up and have been held up since this blockade earlier in the year. This has been going on now for months. The open question, though, is whether or not there are enough Republicans who can come together with Democrats to change the rules, whether extremely specifically, just so that they can get through this period of time and this batch of nominees, or if there's a larger conversation happening to get Tuberville to get rid of the hold that he has placed on this. I am not of the mindset that he is going to do that. I mean, he's been very clear about the fact that he's not going to lift these holds until he sees the Pentagon change its policy on supporting abortion access for those who don't decide where they're stationed, but might end up in a state that abortions are heavily restricted, and so they would have to travel outside of state. This basically covers those travel and logistics costs. But at the same time, with that policy not shifting, I think a lot of us have just been wondering, is there an off-ramp for Senator Tuberville? Because at each point, even his own leadership, even Senator Mitch McConnell, who reiterated this yesterday, he did not think that this blockade was a bad was a good idea. And he has been open about saying that to reporters and certainly within his own Republican ranks. The question is, do they do some kind of a rule change that's targeted and specific that allows them to go through all of these nominees that are backed up en masse? Because the problem is, and you and I have talked about this before, you can't just go through and say, all right, let's just sit in a room for an hour and we'll just vote yay, nay, yay, nay on each of these nominations. That is not how this works. This would take weeks, and that's weeks that the Senate doesn't have. Um, I would argue that they can make the time, but maybe I've seen Dave too many times. Um, let me put up um, General Smith's, uh, in his own words, about the consequences of doing two jobs at once. The workload remains the same. There's still the two full-time jobs uh, filled by one person. Uh, so that hasn't changed. I mean, I, I mean I've moved houses, but uh, I am still doing both of those jobs um, and, and using my staff as best I can to fill in where the assistant commandant would normally be full-time, because I simply can't be in two places at once. So one person doing the jobs of two, um, not minor or unimportant people at once, but two vitally important positions at once. All the chickens are coming home to roost. The things we've been talking about for months mm -hmm. together, Nicole, are now coming to fruition in a worst case scenario where we've got troops in conflict, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Commandant of the Marine Corps has been run into the ground. That's what's happening. Literally. Right? Like, literally. Like, right? Imagine if you had to host two shows every day and, and your family had to endure that. That's what these folks have to but endure. But I guess the difference is, is no one lives or dies if I have to hold host two uh, shows uh, at uh, once. 100%. But the workload and the stress right. and the impact on your family. I ask everybody watching to imagine doing two jobs mm -hmm. at, at, with the highest stakes possible at a time when Marines are also on at embassies around the globe. Mm -hmm. When we had 37 attacks and counting on U.S. troops mm -hmm. in Syria and, and, and in Iraq. And we've got three.
300 more headed to the Middle East now. So this is happening at a time when Putin is grateful. Hamas loves this. Tuberville is doing the work of our enemies. He's undermining our national security, and he's not backing down. So an off-ramp is unlikely. What the Democrats and Republicans, I hope, can do is figure out a way to run him over. He's a political extremist. He's kind of like a political suicide bomber. You can't negotiate with a terrorist. He's not going to back down. The question is, what do the Democrats, and I hope the Republicans, too, do to steamroll him? Because he's not going to move. Ellie, is there any um, opportunity for Mitch McConnell to say, hey, in the wake of a terrorist attack in Israel, let's table your little personal mission for a minute? There is always that opportunity. There's always an opportunity for senators to take a stand on anything, Nicole. I just think that the way that McConnell has been able to hold on to power within his caucus for so long is A, knowing where everyone stands, and B, being able to toe the line without upsetting any of his members too much. I think what Tuberville has been able to do on this is he has been able to hold the line as the one senator who can be at the center of it, but there are certainly a handful of other senators around him who support what he is doing, but more than that, don't want to be on the side of voting against what he is doing. And I think that that's a really important point here because many Republican senators have been outspoken, McConnell included, about the fact that they don't think that this is a good idea, that this is not the most effective way to register a complaint or try to change the Pentagon's policy. But they also don't want to be put in a politically sticky position where they end up siding with Democrats and basically saying that they are tacitly okay with what the Pentagon is doing. I mean, abortion politics are very much wrapped up in this conversation, even though they seem like they are disparate things, national security and reproductive rights access. All of these things are together swirling in the same pot here, and it's part of what makes this such an intractable and sticky and thorny issue. But yes, McConnell has been clear. He doesn't like this. He doesn't think it's a good idea. That doesn't mean that Tuberville's going to change his mind, and clearly he hasn't.